Hi there, Sherry Schreiber of GettingBetter.com. <laughs> I realized in my last video, um, do you feel like others get you and you get them, that I left out uh, uh, an element that I wanted to include, but uh, failed to. So here it comes. Um, many years ago, when I was uh, doing my internship toward a marriage and family therapist license, I went to some sort of um, presentation with a boyfriend that I had at the time, some sort of presentation thing. <laughs> and I don't know, after this presentation, maybe it was Esther Hicks or something like that, um, I was talking with this woman who was sitting nearby me and we just, we just struck up a conversation and she said, what do you do? And I said, well, uh, I'm a marriage and family therapist intern. <laughs> and she said, oh, that's really great. And she started just automatically telling me as people have uh, for a lot of my life done, <laughs> I don't know. It almost felt like I had a neon sign above my head that said, <laughs> if you have a problem, sit here. Uh, strangers would stop me in supermarkets, start telling me their life history and talking to me about their physical ailments. And it, this has always been the case. Total strangers do this with me. I don't know what it is I'm emanating, but that's the way it's always been. And my friends always, you know, called me Dr. Schreiber for decades before <laughs> I had even considered returning to school to legitimize what I was sort of organically, naturally doing across the course of my entire adult life in other venues. But I digress. This woman was speaking to me and she said, I have the hardest time communicating with my mother. I don't know what it is. I just, I get so frustrated with her. I have just the hardest time communicating with her. And it, it, it feels like I, I'm speaking a, a foreign language to her at times. And I said, you probably are. Anyway, she asked for my business card. <laughs> And I gave it to her, my psychotherapy card back then. <laughs> and, uh, and she called me and she made an appointment for both her and her mother. She wanted to bring her mother in because she felt in the short time, I think, that she'd conversed with me at this function, um, that I had some sort of idea about what was really going on underneath her frustrating experiences trying to communicate with her mom. So they both came into my office and I said, from what I understand, I addressed the mother, I said, from what I understand from your daughter, she feels as though she's speaking a different language with you than you are with her. And I said, uh, this happens quite frequently between parents and their children. And the child grows up not feeling understood by the parent and feeling frustrated and estranged from the parent because they're really communicating on very different levels. They're in different chapters of, 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 of the book. And what I conveyed to both of them was, I would like to help you together discover a new language that you can speak with one another and on both sides understand and be understood. But I knew this would require some challenging work for both of them. The daughter was really on board with this. I think she was in her like 
maybe mid to late 30s, something like that at the time. I was maybe in my mid to late 40s at the time. <laughs> but the daughter seemed very excited and enthusiastic about this potential. Unfortunately, they never came back for another session. Why? Because the mother felt strongly that she didn't want to work with somebody who was just an intern at the time. She felt it very essential to go to a licensed professional. And, you know, maybe she was right about that. I don't know. <laughs> but I had intuited that this was their problem. The daughter, through growing up with a lot of this frustration and trying desperately to make her thoughts, her ideas, her feelings, um, herself known by the mother, had been forced to grow and develop. Had sort of naturally and organically moved into a higher order of thinking. Her curiosity about how to fix this issue with her mother, this breakdown in communication with a mother who was really, well, this is going to offend a lot of people probably, but the mother was quite infantile. The mother was quite underdeveloped emotionally. So she was emotionally retarded, so to speak. She was developmentally um, stunted. So here's the daughter trying to open herself up and explain herself to the mother, and the mother just couldn't grasp anything she was saying. They weren't on the same page. They weren't even in the same chapter. The daughter was hoping, wishing, expecting her middle-aged mother to be able to comprehend what she was speaking to her mom. Never realizing, never once realizing that the mother probably had personality disorder traits, was extraordinarily underdeveloped, had only a child's capacity for understanding language and being able to make sense of that language, being able to make sense of that language by being able to make abstractions in her mind's eye. An abstraction, I talk about this in my Attention Deficit Disorder article, being able to make abstractions, and ADDers are brilliant at this. I mean, it comes naturally to us. We just do it like breathing. If you say to me, okay, Sherry, such and such is a fact, such and such is true in this instance, I will naturally start thinking. My mind, my creative mind will naturally start thinking. Well, if that thing is true in that domain, in that instance, in that category, what other categories and domains might it also be true in? In other words, is it true across the board, or is it only true in this one little domain? ADDers do this. They have creative minds. You spark off a whole kind of, like an eruption, a cascade, if you will. If you state a fact to an ADDer, they're already putting together, where else might this be true? That's the capacity to think abstractly to make abstractions in the mind. Someone who's fixated in a very young, very concrete um, level of their emotional development can't do that. They take everything at face value. They don't make abstractions. It doesn't come naturally to them. They're not thinking of other instances where this fact may apply. If I told you, well, 
when oranges get really ripe, or any kind of citrus fruit for that matter, I have citrus trees in my backyard, um, if they get really, really ripe, they'll eventually fall off the tree. They'll just drop to the ground. Well, an ADD -er might think, well, I'm wondering if that's true for all fruit. Is that true for persimmons? Is that true for apples? Is that true for figs? Not usually. A fig will hang on the tree <laughs> until it shrivels up and dies, or the squirrels get to it first before you do. Okay. But an ADD mind, that creative thinking brain, is going to wonder, where else that is that fact true? Where is it applicable? Well, a child's mind can't do this. This takes a certain amount of development to be able to do this, to think this way. So sometimes the frustrations that we run into with our parental units, and they're far less developed than we <sighs> um, we're literally speaking a different language to them e imagine how frustrating it might be if you tried to have an adult intricate conversations about conversation about feelings and needs and experiences with a three-year-old. A three-year-old isn't going to be able to relate to those experiences of yours or the way you felt about those experiences. You've seen in my writings on borderline personality disorder, it's like, it's like dealing with a three-year-old. As long as they have needs and they're able to put those needs forth and have you responsive to those needs, everything's fine in the relationship. But if you have a need, if you have an intricate issue you're needing to speak with them about, if you have a feeling that's hard for you to express but you're determined to have them understand so that they can be responsive to that feeling or issue in you, you're going to be out of luck a lot of the time. And it, it would be the same kind of frustration. You wouldn't even think of communicating in these ways to somebody who who's under five years old. It wouldn't even occur to you. You'd have to keep your communications very clear, very concise, very simple, simplistic, in order that that child can understand what you're saying, what you're needing, what you're putting forth. Especially if it involves, if it involves personal stuff pertaining to you and your desires or needs. Well, it's kind of the same with a borderline. This is not to say borderlines are bad people. It's not to say they're stupid. I, I've known some that are absolutely, utterly brilliant. Brilliant! both in my practice and in my personal life and among my colleagues. Brilliant, brilliant, intellectually brilliant people. But when it comes to their emotional development, there are serious deficits there. And they can't understand when you have a need. They might personalize it. If I go to a girlfriend and I say, you know, I, I, I have so much admiration and respect for you, and I adore you so much, and I'd love it if we could just spend more time together, if you could just be more available to me. She might, I might be bumping up against her shame zone inside, which she's had since infancy. <laughs> I've talked about this in other videos, and certainly online in my self-help articles. That might bump up against her shame zone. She personalizes this. She makes this her fault. She's hearing that as you're defective, 
you're not able to meet my needs. What's wrong with you that you're not more available to me? And um, that might make her want to distance even more. I had this happen with a colleague many years ago. Loved her company, loved being with her. Just adored her. Adored her. Actually, I've had a couple of people in my life like this, both colleagues, both psychotherapists. Couldn't get enough. Couldn't get enough from them. One of them would descend into a depression uh, so frequently that when I call her, want to line up a lunch or something like a visit, go for coffee, whatever, take a walk together. <laughs> She was either immersed in a depression, I wouldn't hear back from her for a week or two. Or she was she'd just come off a depression, a serious bout of depression, and uh, she just she hadn't reconstituted herself as yet. So she couldn't get together with me. It got old for me. I'm not a person who deals with longing and yearning well. Don't like those feelings. If somebody generates those feelings in me, like I talk about in my article, do you love to be needed or need to be loved? If somebody's generating those feelings of longing and yearning in me, I know I'm with the wrong person. That's not a person who can be emotionally responsive to me and my needs. I'm with the wrong person. And I've been known to separate myself from that individual because those are painful sensations. Longing and yearning. Painful, painful sensations. So rather than it making me, these sensations making me want somebody more, it makes me want to get the fuck out of there. Head for the hills. <laughs> Hightail it out of there. <laughs> oh! If you're generating those feelings in me, and I'm not a needy person. I mean, I'm pretty self contained. I spend a lot of time alone with me, and I like it. I really enjoy my sherry time. I'm not a needy person emotionally. But if I enjoy your company and I see you as an enhancement to my world that I, I, I really enjoy for myself, well, then I'm going to want to have social interaction with you from time to time. And if you're always too busy or you're depressed or you're just coming out of a depression or whatever the hell it is, it's going to set up a condition of longing and yearning for me that's going to be profoundly uncomfortable for me. I don't need that shit. I don't want that shit. I grew up with that shit. I don't want any more of it. It makes me know this isn't a good fit for me. I might love you like crazy. I might admire you till, from now until kingdom come. I might have tremendous admiration and respect for you. And high regard for you. But if those feelings in me get triggered, whether you're a boyfriend or a gal pal or whoever you are to me, I'm going to have to check out of the relationship. Because what it means is I'm not getting my needs met. So in an ongoing dynamic, say with a parent, who doesn't see you, doesn't hear you, doesn't understand you, doesn't get you. This can bring up profound feelings of loneliness and isolation in you. It can have you shaming yourself for not being able to get through to that parent or that friend or that lover. Don't do that to yourself. 
a very wise woman years ago. Her name is Chelly Campbell. I had her on my uh, interview show my, that I used to produce and host for um, public access cable TV. I had Chelly on my show one day. She said, Sherry, the thing to remember as you go through life is there are your people and there are other people's people. The trick in life is finding your people. Figure out a way to hang with your people. Don't mess with other people's people. They're not a fit for you. They're not a match for you. You may admire them and love them and think they're great. Respect them. But if they're not available to you, if they don't get what you're communicating, if they can't appreciate what you're sharing about yourself, if there are lots of misunderstandings, if they're reactive instead of responsive to you, when you try to have them understand your innermost feelings and thoughts, they're not your people. Choose again. Choose differently. So if you have a parent who you don't ever feel understood by, and it's terribly frustrating, isolating, um, sadness producing for you, anger producing for you. This is what's going on. It's not your fault. You may be a brilliant person. You may communicate in a stellar way. I've had clients who are just brilliant people and their communication skills are spectacular. And yet they could never be understood by a mother or a father. And they grew up I think on some subliminal level, presuming it was their fault, their deficit, their shortcoming. If I try just a little harder to make this parent understand to me, to help them understand, I'll get through. No, you won't. Because a lot of the time, you're trying to explain yourself to a three-year-old. And that didn't work while you were growing up, and it's not going to work now. Hope this has been educational for you. And I wish you a happier, healthier, more nourishing, more restorative and relaxing new year in 2018. And bye for now.